call this meeting to order. We're going to rise, and we've got by special arrangement with Calvert Catholic Schools. We have the kindergarten class doing the Pledge of Allegiance. This is special arrangement with uh, Dave Kraft, a friend of ours, and this is going to go into the time capsule. These kids will be 56 when this time when the time capsule is open. So. this day. Thank you for those wonderful children. Uh, thank you for the fall days that we have ahead be with our producers across the county. We ask at a time where there's a lot of charity work going on that we ask for all those leading those those causes and uh, bless all those who are giving. We also ask that in a time of tragedies going on across our world and even incidences in our own county, we ask you to be with those who need your strong arms at this time. Be with us and guide us as we go about conducting the work of this county. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Roll call. Commissioner Kirshner? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Stacy. Yes. I'll accept the motion to approve the digital audio visual recording of the previous board session from Tuesday, October 17th, 2017, and a written index thereof. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, any adjustments? Okay, move on. Old business, Justice Center. Okay, um, the leadership team meeting is this coming Thursday, public safety building at noon. Um, I will not be there in attendance, but I know Stacy is going to be there for sure. Mm -hmm. And well, that's the monthly monthly meeting, so we'll get an update of everything. And uh, we always see the um, financials and how things are rolling there. What's left to every in contingencies and all that good stuff, work days, all that all that um, important information. The sidewalk superintendent, the most recent one we have, shows what you're seeing out there in terms of most of the uh, the metal cornice and the window shroud stuff continuing not quite done with all that yet on the inside working on the ceiling grids the tiling work continues painting casework on the second floor you can see the tr trailer in front of the justice center there parallel to washington street that is the uh, casework um, crew that's doing that work for the the benches and all that so that's all great um, time capsule things the committee met again last week we continue to meet about every two weeks at this point um, and in our long spreadsheet of various things that we're collecting. We're making great progress and things that collected and getting contributions in. Um, some of the electronic methods of getting out or requesting contributions from businesses, families, um, individuals, uh, and all of that. We are going to print up some business card size um, sheet, or business cards, I guess, with all of that information on it. So the hashtag selfie to 2067 will be on there. The 
the link uh, or the actually obviously click click on your business card but um, the address I guess for uh, linking in to contribute as a business and or a family or individuals that's going to be on there as well um, we have a Facebook page started Seneca County Justice Center um, time capsule that people can get on and like and all of this information is going to be on that Facebook page because we want to get as many people to contribute our limitations of the time capsule are not very limited when it, we talk about electronic storage so we want as much of those kinds of things to be included so we're going to have a real active effort on getting that those things collected we specifically um, had sent letters to the schools and i'd just like to acknowledge the fact along with calvert kindergarten class <laughs> that has contributed that uh, video we got to see and have the pledge with this morning we have received input from hope of loudon they submitted a thumb drive and an index of the things on their thumb drive we asked the schools if they could to contribute a yearbook as well as anything else electronically and old fort had dropped off their 2017 yearbook and a thumb drive so we'll encourage all the other schools to join in and contribute something towards the time capsule as well so that's just an update on how that's what well. yeah thank you holly that's it's going really well holly has formed a, a really broad based uh, committee to bring in a lot of people from a lot of different aspects of the community so that we have a good representation in the time capsule so she's done a great job with that i'm really I'm excited about that uh, landscape committee I just wanted to give a brief update that we uh, continue to uh, periodically meet and discuss uh, the final landscape form uh, we're going to be delayed a little bit and and doing landscape this fall simply from the standpoint that we're not going to get the construction site back as soon as we had hoped um, with them putting the cupola up and, and whatnot we're not going to be able to get in there and put concrete down and uh, so, you know, everything's going to be tore up, uh, you know, really through till we occupy. So that's reduced the urgency uh, from that standpoint uh, to, to get uh, some things done this fall. So, uh, you know, just stay tuned. We don't have a budget yet, uh, but we will continue to kind of forge ahead with the ideas. And, and we don't expect, you know, a big complicated landscape design but uh, you know, we need to get some sidewalks in and some grass land, some of which is included in the, the contract not all of which and then creative county uh, placemaking challenge application they did extend that deadline uh, we are submitted and we'll, we'll see how that uh, that pans out I just did it myself uh, there's you know, counties under 250,000 were eligible to apply for the placemaking challenge. Uh, in, you know, using arts uh, to develop your county and, and you know, kind of embracing the creative class. Uh, the, the culmination of the project will be a, a three-day strategic planning uh, with some arts uh, planning experts. So we'll we'll see where we land on that, but we're we're submitted for that. Uh, new business along with the landscape committee one of the things that we uh, originally wanted to do is make sure that we had a bike racks in place on the ground and leadership Seneca County came forward with uh, an opportunity for us to purchase their bike rack that was originally intended for the library but they weren't able to find a, a place for them uh, when they did uh, you know when they targeted cycling and did bike donations, one of the things they targeted was bike racks uh, in each community, Faustoria and Tiffin. And so they were able to contract with an individual who did a custom bike rack for them and uh, the cost for a cost of $335, probably about half what it would have cost if we would have bought it from uh, a catalog. Uh, and customized to that degree. You know, ours was, I think, 250 or something out here. Now it's just a loop. Yeah. So we've got some ideas where we'll put it in the you know, <coughs> landscaping mix of the concrete and the sidewalks uh, at the Justice Center. But that hasn't been finalized. But that's the idea is that it'll have a you know, central place up there to kind of support leadership Seneca County. Uh, I had intended to keep 
put it in the entire landscape budget, but until we get to that point, um, I would like to pay this invoice for $335. The, we have the rack, it's in the back. So, uh, you know, if we want to, and I'm not sure the best way to do that, Stacy. if we do. Uh, um, yeah, I was thinking about that last night. We could probably pay for that off of um, John's supply account, or we can include that in, if, if it's part of the FF&E, we can pull it off that purchase order. Okay. Knowing that, you know, I mean, it's three and thirty-five dollars. Yeah, it's. I just want to make sure the guy gets paid. Yeah. And I want to make sure everybody's informed. Right. So. Right. I just hadn't didn't have anything specific for this. So, but we've got purchase orders we can pull it off of if, if that's what you guys want us to do. And then it'll be the landscape committee will figure out where it goes and yeah, all that kind of right. stuff. Yeah. And since we don't have the budget set for that, I guess that's the best way because we don't want to leave this vendor hanging. That's that's good. Yeah. yeah. You would include something when you read through, or do we? We don't need to know. It's already in place, right? Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. New fund request. Is that you? Yes. Um, in the cooperative agreement that we have with the city of Tiffin for the Justice Center, um, includes language that we need to set up a special fund for um, the capital improvements which the city will be contributing to and also an operating fund. Um, I sent the request over to the auditor's office and she had suggested that uh, due to the nature of this fund it should be sent to the state. So I do have two resolutions for both of those funds ready um, to read and I can read them with the rest of the agenda but I want, at least wanted to explain you know, what they were for. We put detailed in the resolution the uses and the purpose and the uh, revenue stream so um, we're going to attach the use management agreement to this when we send it down to the state if the state determines that yes it's something they set up they'll let us know if it's something that we can just do locally then uh, julie will send us the number when she's ready so is it one fund or two it'll be two it's a fund. Okay, yeah. and if you go to the state because it's a joint fund is that the that's thought her, that's her thought on that yeah yeah, because the in the in the code it doesn't specifically have a section that we shall for a cooperative agreement. So that's why she she recommended that it go down to the state just for, you know, and she said it shouldn't take very long to get an answer back. But she thought it should come come from the state. And who has administrative authority over that? Is it the county? The county. county. Yep. Yeah. So I can just read those with the rest of them. I just wanted to bring it up on as a different topic since I didn't have them ready when he was sending out the agenda. Okay, uh, Red Cross sheltering agreement. Uh, we were at the Homeland Security uh, meeting, was that last? Wednesday. Wednesday? Time flies. Last Wednesday and one of the things that that came up and, and i think this is the third time it's come up in meetings i've been at is we don't have an update from the red cross on sheltering agreements across the county uh, so we have uh, places where sheltering agreements once existed like for instance st wendlin and it's a, a closed school now so the contacts are dated you know, it's questionable whether or not the facility is uh, is viable, and uh, you know, so the, the Red Cross has agreed to take this task on for us historically, but they've had staff turnover in the recent years that that the work has just fallen through the cracks. But from my standpoint, you know, this is really important stuff, and you know, the planning for an emergency. It's you know it's you hope you never need it, but we you know we just absolutely have to do it. So my my suggestion, and I talked to Dan about this, and his suggestion as well was to you know send a letter to the Red Cross, you know the, the Buckeye region, and and uh, the North Central Ohio region, and and ask them to do this work for us and, and, and put it on on their list of priorities, because you know in in light of uh, you know what happened in Puerto Rico and Texas and Florida and wildfires 
you know, a lot of people head into emergency shoulders, and I think if we had a situation, we'd be scrambling a little bit. I think we'd get it done and it would, you know, work out, but then we need to do a little bit more pre-planning and the, the Red Cross has taken off, you know, has voluntarily taken on that task, because that's what they do and they do well. And so, um, you know, we just want to ask them to, to follow through with that, that work. So I thought a, a letter would be yeah, I think it's a good idea. Because I think they, it was outdated and it's outdated as soon as it's written. We, I get that. But two years ago, whenever I participated in that training, it was then had issues with it. And same thing, they were, you know, just hadn't gotten to it. So I think yeah. this puts it on record that we've formally sent something requesting them to please make a priority and get it done for us? Yeah, that's, I mean, we appreciate what they do. Right. We absolutely do, but it, it's also we need, we need this done. There's, there's not an active shelter east of Tiffin. So, you know, yeah. so that, that's problematic. All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about is human resource training. And I talked to our, our insurance company, and they have modules available for training for human resources. Uh, they're web-based modules. Uh, you know, they look at it as risk mitigation. Uh, but in light of you know, some of the things that are going on in the world as far as you know, sexual harassment, training uh, is probably appropriate. And we have modules that we can roll out. And I just wanted to bring it up here you know, for us to consider you know, recommending it or to ask Stacy and the Human Resource Committee or individual managers to, to look at, I think it's Corsa University, there's probably 20 uh, different modules, everything from cybersecurity to, uh, you know, ADA or whatever, uh, but, you know, you know, I don't think we're in a position to, you know, make everyone do it at this point, but uh, you know, especially in light of a lot of things that are going on right now, I think the sexual harassment training for managers and employees would be uh, well advised. So I don't know if you had any thoughts on that. Just again, those are great resources that we have at our disposal because of you know, being involved with Corsa, that if we can get people to, to utilize those or just remind them, you know, it, it's worth taking the time once a quarter or something to you know, to participate in one of those webinars, I think there's one coming up on. I don't know if that's under Corsa or on records. What did I saw not long ago? I know it's in early November. But I kind of like I, I've never participated in one of them, so I think I kind of comment. I need to ask staff how they. If you have to, you have to still sign up ahead of time. Yeah. Because they do fill. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not webinars. a seated class. It's a webinar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, just some reminders out there again how to how to participate in those things and that you do need to register in advance sign, you know it doesn't cost anything but you need to get signed up and and utilize it some yeah. resources it's zero i mean that's what it costs yeah it costs zero, zero. Yeah. yeah i mean it, people's time is valuable and yeah. everybody it might take you know, half hour of your time take, take, take half gonna, hour time no travel and, <laughs> but I, I think we can all find a half hour time at the time so um do you think we could just send out a circular Sure. Stacy, that just says, hey, just to remind you, we have these available. You know, we've talked at it about it at the board, and mm -hmm. uh, in light of world events, so uh, you, you may want to take a look at this and see if your staff could participate. Yep. And then we should probably lead and, and do, do it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> um, reminder: We do have a, a required course of training tomorrow um, at nine. It's supposed to last two hours. Um, the calendar doesn't give me the topics, but I know we picked out two topics that are current. Um, so that's required for the, not the employees, but the uh, elected officials in the department heads required to attend tomorrow. So just a reminder on that one. Yeah. Okay, that's all I had. Do you have anything else? Solution? Sure. Yep. Um, I asked uh, Mike had sent uh, Mike Dell, our reporter, sent over a request. So I asked him um, if he would mind coming over to explain the request. And he sent it to Tanya. So um, I'll let Mike explain, and then I can read it when we read the rest of the resolutions, if that's okay. We're honored that he's here. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we bought donuts or something. Yeah. <laughs> I have an employee that's going to be leaving at the end of the year. Um, I have hired someone to take their place, and I need the additional funding to pay her for these last couple months. Um, trying to get her a little training. Um, she picked up on it very well, and uh, I think it'll all work out. How, how much are we talking? Transition. Let's see. Is this one yours? $3,763. Sounds correct. Well, we hate that we're losing an employee. But I'm glad you found Yeah. We're grateful to find some women. Then it doesn't always work out that you get to have a training opportunity right. with the new person and that, the person yeah. retiring. <laughs> that's kind of retiring or moving on, whichever it is. Yeah. Retiring. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the way I was looking at it. So it'd be some valuable valuable information that she could uh, she could get out of just being in the office. Yeah. Um, is there any buyout for the employee leaving? No, there's not. Okay. If it is, it, 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 it'll be, I mean, Within I'll be that. able to cover it. Okay. I don't have any problems. Anything else going on in your world that we can clear about? Building's good, the office is good, everything's good. We're getting pummeled by all the easement people. So I was just yeah. told Nikki that between wind, pipeline, and the power company, I was saying, there's a guy we have right now in the office. He's flying in from Bakersfield, California to search. And I think he's pipeline. Okay. And he stays for two weeks, then he flies home, and comes back on the following Tuesday. Yeah. Wow. But they, that's what a lot of these guys do. They, yeah, I mean, right. They and that's not, that's not stuff that's going on now. That's some stuff coming down the road, probably. He's that, just doing easement stuff now. That and also... If they have something from a previous uh, search that they were either missing or whatever, but they crisscross the country, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. It's a good gig if you can stand the trap. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Get to vacation in Tiffin, Ohio for <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> he said he actually likes it. Yeah. So. Good. I might want to touch base with you um, just to update myself on. Well, how that all plays out, I'm going to moderate a session because Dale Arnold, who spoke at the quarterly township meeting, who was at, who was at that from the Ohio Farm Bureau, is we requested him on the planning committee for our county commissioners association winter conference, and then have one session on energy, and what, you know, just a brief snapshot of the stuff going on, but more about how is a county and what offices are impacted and what happens as this continues because he says we are far from over with what's coming. We've got a lot going on now and he goes and it's not done. It's going to be a continual thing for three oh, years. Oh, it has been for yeah. quite a while. For quite a while. So we're going to have that because as much as to intake give us, some of us here, a little light on what's happening with those dealing with the shale. And there's other parts, you know, that we might have, we have the wind come. Some have been through that. Some have not. Some, you know, it's just different for everybody. And we thought that would might be appeal to a lot of the people attending the conference, so we're going to do oh, that. Especially in the, the eastern counties. Yes. They've just been. Yeah. I mean, so I think they can shed some light on for some people on some things, and I'm, we you know can all learn from each other a little bit. And it was, I, I forget which county I was talking to at Continuing Ed, and she lost her chief deputy, who and she said she couldn't stop her. I mean, couldn't find any fault with her leaving because of what they were paying her to run one of the crews that's searching the titles. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're very fortunate that we're getting all this infrastructure investment, though. I mean, power lines, and the gas lines. I mean, all you have to do is look at Puerto Rico and what happens when you don't invest in your infrastructure. You know, it's, yeah. it's easy to get frustrated when they're digging up downtown and putting in gas lines and, you know, covering up fields and putting up power lines. But that stuff's going to be valuable for a very long time. Yeah. So we're very fortunate that we're getting that kind of investment. Um, another question since Mike's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since you're here. Um, no, it came up at our time capsule meeting. When we're all done with this and we inventory, we can record 
Is that what the, is that how they brought that up? That question was somebody yeah, asked. Some, somehow we can record. Can we record with the contents of the time capsule? Or I mean, how do you? you we could record the resolution with everything on it. So we do a resolution that lists the okay. We said we'll be until at the time we were, we were playing through the timeline, which we have to share with the leadership committee probably next month's meeting um, about where we think we're at and what what should happen first and right. that kind of thing and with opening and moving in and time capsule and all that stuff. But okay. sure, yeah, we could do that. Somebody mentioned that we'll get it recorded, then we have record. It's there. And, okay. No, no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks for coming over. I well, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. You're free to go if you want. I'm free to go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get any more question exciting question than this. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. No offense, Charlene, because I know you're ready to report. <laughs> I, I, I know where I stand. It's okay. She's got lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're free to stay. You're free to stay. Free to stay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you want me to start reading through? Oh, sure. Okay. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the VOCA uh, fund. She's putting $15,000 into the transfers outline. I have a supplement decrease to the permanent appropriations for the VOCA grant fund. Um, she has two accounts in her VOCA fund that she's reducing. Her um, fiscal year ends differently than most in the county, so that's why she's reducing. She'll have to put those back in place. Um, so she's reducing for her one $35,631.52 and her other one $4,140.34. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the general fund, putting $3,000 into the uh, equipment line for the auditor. This is for the new shredder that we talked about last week. Um, I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the county sewer district fund. This is for, I got uh, $5,600 for Bascom contract services, $245 for other expense for Honey Creek, and $7,900 for new regal contract service, total $13,745. I have an appropriation adjustment within the general fund, moving $200 from contract services to contract repair. This is at the request of the EU Center. I have a supplement to the permanent appropriations to the county sewer district fund. I'm um, putting $3,360.81 into salaries. Um, I'm not sure which fund this one is. Um, just a sewer district. Do you know which one? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't have those account numbers memorized. Oh, so. oh that was a deer in the headlights. It, um, uh, I, it's the same fund as the other one? Is that thank one? You. number I one? I don't know. Hold on a second. Zero two one zero is Honey Creek. Two right? two one zero. Oh, this is zero zero two one. So it's gonna be the one that's not listed on two, the other twenty twenty three two twenty four. Okay. Um, I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the general fund. This is uh, the request of Mike Dell, the recorder, $3,763 into salaries. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the general fund, uh, appropriating $1,195. This is at the request of the treasurer. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the PSI pre-sentence investigation writer grant fund. Putting $33,794.50 into contract service. I have an appropriation adjustment within the general fund, moving $5,000 from contract service to supplies. This is at the request of uh, juvenile and probate court. I have a supplement to the permit appropriation to the delinquent care and custody grant fund, uh, total $14,900. I have a supplement to permit appropriation to the VOCA fund, 
putting $4,560.50 into other expense. Um, I have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the general fund. Uh, total request $19,582.48. A um, little confused on this one, but this was at the request of the auditor's office. The sheriff got donations for um, 15 receivers from the Project Lifesaver Lions Club. They purchased the actual receivers and donated the receivers to the county. The county has documented it as um, an asset. Uh, the auditor's office insisted that we do expense for this. Um, there is no expense going out because it's it's paid already. So um, this resolution was at the request of the auditor's office. So I'm not not quite sure I understand that, but she said that we needed to track it on the expense side. Um, but the county's not expensing it. Uh, resolution amending the board's orders of October 17, 2017, Journal 93, page 155. This is for the supplement to the permanent appropriations to the Selective Traffic Enforcement Program Fund. Um, looks like she reduced it. She must not have had uh, enough in place. Uh, the original was $4,987.44. She's amending it to $3,000. $555.99. Uh, resolution authorizing the sale of county owned property 2005 Ford Crown Victoria on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. He sells these on um, Gov Deals. And this one has an extra zero on it. It's only supposed to be $500. <laughs> Wish we got more than that, but. Um, and I have a resolution authorizing the sale of county-owned property. This is a 2007 Ford Crown Victoria. Also for the Sheriff's Office, this one we got uh, sold for $1,000. And there's an extra zero. Um, I have a resolution authorizing an amendment number eight to the contract agreement between EHOBE for the TANA Summer Program on behalf of the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services. I have a resolution approving the bid with Rush Truck Center for a 164 passenger school bus on behalf of the Seneca County Opportunity Center. And I have a resolution establishing uh, the 2018 Strategic Planning for the Justice and Mental Health Collaboration Program Fund. The new fund will be number 1181. Um, I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to hold a public hearing related to the County of Allen, Ohio Hospital Facilities Revenue Bond Series 2018 for Mercy Health. Um, they have just recently sent us some documents, um, and I think we sent them out to you guys this morning to review. The hearing will be November 14th, uh, 10 a.m. here at our office. And I have the resolution establishing a special fund for the purpose of receiving amounts paid to the county under Section 5.1 of the Joint Use Management and Lease Agreement between the City of Tiffin and the County of Seneca and confirming the purpose for which those funds shall be used. And uh, this is the same establishing a special fund for the purpose of receiving amounts paid to the county under section 5.3 of the joint use management agreement um, and this one is for the 5.3 is the capital improvements the first one was the um, operating so we will send those down to state. those are all the resolutions i have to approve Second. Roll call. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Kirchner. Excellent. Anything else? Oh, we'll go. Thanks.
Yeah, we just did it. Oh, we just did it. <laughs> 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 we are very pleased to have with us Charlene what, from Seneca County Regional Planning, and she has an update for us. Yes. Uh, just a really brief update on the Ohio History Connection um, Rover Pipeline funds that we received. It was fifty thousand dollars total and the county agreed to award some funds to certain entities and to set up a historical trust fund. Um, one of the entities, the Senate County Park District, had two different projects that they were going to do. One of them being the um, roof on the West Lodi Church. And due to insurance purposes, um, they were able to get the roof replaced through insurance funds, so they did not need those $5,000. So that $5,000 is going to go back into the um, trust fund that we established. So instead of that being $23,000, it's going to be $28,000 that we'll have available for um, trust fund services. Um, so, you know, if somebody applies to the group and we'll review it, and then if the group approves it, they'll bring it to the commissioners for final approval. Um, we've issued memorandums of understanding to all entities involved. Uh, we are in process of gathering those. We received them back for the park district, and we received the park district's first invoice, which is $5,000 to start the uh, historical marker process and all the good stuff that goes with it. Uh, the great thing about these funds is there's no timeline. You know, they, it doesn't expire. So they get their funds and they have all of eternity to expel their funds. So um, that's a nice thing. They don't have to rush and get it done. We can fund them and they can start moving forward. Uh, the Scipio Historical Society is in the process of getting us their invoice for their showcase that they, their display case that they're purchasing, um, and signing off on some papers and getting those back to us, as well as a few other. We've reached out to the entities that are supposed to be on the, um, the advisory committee or the trust for the trust funds that we set up, and we are getting names of who each entity wants to represent them. And then once we get all those names, we will establish a meeting and start accepting applications. I do have a meeting with um, a lady tomorrow who is interested in applying for some funds for a project that is in Seneca County. Um, so we'll just leave it as project entertainment at this point until we know any further because Stacy was giving me the eye. <laughs> yeah. So we'll name it Project Entertainment. And um, once I spoke to her, we'll decide on which route we want to go and uh, if she wants to apply to the trust fund or if we want to come to the commissioners and talk about applying to directly to Ohio History Connection themselves, depending on the amount of funds that are needed. Um, and there's several other entities who've been interested in the trust fund, but um, it's not just for anything. So. They have to understand we have to follow the rules that were set forth under the um, guidance of the funds given to the county and their application will follow the same type of application that we used to submit to the state to get our funds or to submit to the Ohio District Connection to get our funds. So they'll have to follow the rules and guidelines. Um, so while some things seem to be historically significant, they're not. Some things that don't seem historically significant are <laughs> so the um the crew or the group that they put together for the advisory committee um they know their stuff so i'm gonna we'll lean on them and we'll just umbrella it and make sure it comes to you the right way but i want to give you an update on where we stand so right now if <clears throat> i have a bona fide historic project i call regional planning that's correct and what's the phone number there 419-443-7936 extension 123 <laughs> And we have a committee in place that we, would be able to act on this in a fairly rapid manner? We have entities established to the committee. We do not have all the committee members named yet. It's not that. Mm -hmm. No. There's not we're, a process. We have not even had one meeting. We are waiting on all of the named persons from each entity to be given to our office. Um, so as soon as we receive those, we will then be able to establish the first meeting and set the process in motion. Um, we will accept. Regional planning will accept an application. If you call me and say you have a project, I can give you paperwork and you can submit it to us. And at that point, I'm going to prod even harder on the groups that we have designated to give me somebody to be on this committee. Um, so we are still waiting. And a few things are, you know, I can understand why we haven't received on a couple of them due to some personal issues with some of the people that we requested. So you just need to let 
those things sell so they can get back on track. But. Did we get the 50 already? Did we have him. The funds have already been distributed to Seneca County. We have already set up the new fund and we all already have purchase orders in place. So everything has been done. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, my, my opinion on this hasn't changed. Uh, the fact that uh, the money's in the account isn't doing us any good in historic preservation. So we need to get it out on the street. And it seems to me that we have well over $50,000 in applications. Mm -hmm. So the, the fact that this money hasn't been distributed yet is a little problematic to me. So. It is to me on the fact that they have not returned their, the entities that who applied have not returned their MOUs that are signed and haven't provided us with invoices. So I've um, put my staff in charge of Friday, and that's what they're doing. They've been calling and saying, hey, we need your paperwork. We need this back. We need to get you the funds. So it's, and it seems to be working out great because Park District got us their invoice right away. And we've got some other paperwork that's come in already that Jen's working through to get the money out. Um, I would like to have all of it that we've promised to entities out by the end of the month or end of the year. So those funds are gone. And then that the Historic Preservation Trust Fund funds are there to be used to move forward. Um, and we always want to remember that the Historic Preservation Trust Funds that we set up were a one-to-one -one match program. So if you came to us and you requested $25,000, then is your project a $25,000 project or is it a $50,000 project? Because you have to match one-to-one. -one. If it's a $25,000 project, then our portion, if it is approved, would be $12,500 and the applicant would have to match $12,500. But I think this would be a good, be a good reminder to those because I mean, some might have thought, well, we need to wait to see when they get everything established, but to know that they can get their paperwork filed in. Yes. And hopefully for those who had the committed projects, they finished getting what they did. Now, except the one, the insurance took care of it, but that, that's fine. That's We're, right. That's, that's still funding that's then available and I'm glad to use. hopefully some can leverage it. I know there's some questions to um, their MOUs and their timelines and things, and we've explained to them that we just need you to sign off saying you want your money, um, and then you just have to report back to us, and we'll, we'll give you the money. We just need you to say you want it still, and yeah. we'll give it to you. If one of the entities comes back and says they don't want it, we'll do the same process as we did with the um, roof for the West Lodi Church, and we'll go right back into the trust account, which is the best way to do it. We'll be able to fund them back out, so we won't. Not, but I, I haven't heard any of them say they don't want it. They're all just trying to figure out and understand like, how they're going to use it. Most of them are a little confusing, so it worked out in the end. Do we have to do any reporting to the state on this at the end of the year or anything? No. They give us the money. They said we had <clears throat> uh, we have an unlimited timeline to complete the projects that we requested the money for. Because that was my question is how much time do we have to expel the funds? You know, when do we, do we need to report? And they say, you only report if we ask you. If we ask you for pictures, you just send it to us. And what we will do in regional planning, because I am a strong believer of always um, covering our butt, is that for each project in the MOU, we do have it spelled out that they have to provide us with copies of what they're doing. So, uh, for instance, uh, the Fostoria Rail District, I think it is, is doing the uh, way markers for the trail and the historic, some historic sites. So what they'll need to do is provide us with pictures of those as well as the map that goes with them and copies of the invoices. That'll go in their file. We'll have those on record. That way we know they're done. Uh, one of the entities is going to create some maps and trail routes, potentially a book to go with those. They have to provide us with a copy of everything they create and that will go in their file. If somebody's doing a DVD or short videos, they have to provide regional planning with copies of those, and we will keep those in file electronically as well. We, we can provide progress payments to them? We can provide progress payments if they want it, but I'm more than happy um, the way we worded it on some of them. It's a, if they file the money, just send me a copy of the invoice, and we'll pay it right to them to show that they paid it. Um, we can pay the supplier directly, or we can just give them the money up front. So they can move they can get their project done so however however they want to do it we're very open and uh, we want to make it as easy as possible in each entity we know not that everybody doesn't have the funds to expel so if they need the funds up front just ask and give us an invoice and we'll take care of it once you sign your paperwork should we put timelines on this even though we don't have to report it i mean if somebody commits to a project but they're taking two years 
Um, and, but there's another project that is ready and willing to go. Should we put some sort of timeline on it? I think the projects that were picked out were ones that the funds are being used to start up the project. Okay. So you're not going to see a major outcome from them. They're going to be used for you know, the planning and the processing of it. Sure. Some of them are going to be immediate, like the display case in um, Presidio. Sure. I mean, that's an immediate gratification, quick, easy, right? right. Um, but if you're going out and finding all the historical markers, finding out where they're not at, um, there could be maybe a mound that needs a historical marker in Senate County that doesn't have it, or maybe there's a location of where a building was and it doesn't have a historic marker. They got to do some research on that, and that's going to take some time. And they may have to run that through the uh, registry to get it done. And so we so want to sure. wait to pay them till all that is done. Not necessarily okay. because they need funds up front to okay. get that's what was things moving forward. The move the money on out. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it becomes we know it's committed. Yeah. Then it becomes the entity's responsibility to expend their funds yeah. properly. Yeah. We've expended them properly on our side. Now it's their turn. And we've already. Uh, I think we issued, well, we requested the payment to the auditor's office for the park district for their project that they're doing um, because they have already invoiced us and they're getting their committee around and getting ready to work on that as well. So I just want to get everybody moving forward. I want to get everybody their money by the end of the year. I'm, I don't like having money. <laughs> it sounds it's weird. Deadline. Yeah, I just don't like it's having weird. money. <laughs> it, it sounds weird, but I don't. I want to get it out to where it belongs so they can do their projects and yeah. move forward. Oh, any other questions? Thank you for taking Thanks. that on. No problem. Yep. Thank you. Any other comments for the good of the order? Questions from the press? <laughs>